Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Block Podcast. Today, Saturday, April 7th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's MLB action, yesterday's NBA action, yesterday's NHL action, yesterday's action in the Masters. Go over a crazy scenario that's in play, but not likely for the NHL playoffs. A couple key injuries to the New York Yankees and a suspension in the minor leagues to a top prospect for the Boston Red Sox. All right, Major League Baseball. Yesterday, the Indians feed the Royals 3-2 in their home opener as they improve the 3-4. and four. Casey drops the 1-4. and four. Carlos Carrasco with the win. Danny Duffy with the loss. Cody Allen with the save. Top of the first inning, the Royals got it going first. Mike Moustakis, RBI ground out one nothing Royals. Also in the top of the first, RBI single by Lucas Duda makes it 2 nothing. Bottom of the first, Jose Ramirez, RBI single to get the Indians on the board. And in the bottom of the first, RBI single by Michael Brantley that scored in two runs. 3-2 Cleveland. That was all the scoring for this game. Danny Duffy went 5 and 2 thirds. Three hits, three earned runs, three walks, and three strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 7.45 ERA. Carlos Carrasco, six innings, five hits, two earned runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 5.4 ERA. The Braves defeat the Rockies 8 to 3 in the Rockies' home opener as they improved the 5 and 2. The Rockies dropped the 4 and 4. Brandon McCarthy with the win. Herman Marquez with the loss. Top of the first inning, the Braves kick it off good. Home run. Ozzy Albies, one nothing Braves. Top of the first, sacrifice fly. Preston Tucker, 2 nothing Braves. Top of the first, RBI triple that scored in two runs for Dancy Swanson to make it 4 nothing Braves. Bottom of the first, RBI triple for Carlos Gonzalez to make it 4-1. to one. Bottom of the fourth, Carlos Gonzalez with a solo home run to get the Rockies within 2. Also in the bottom of the fourth, Solo shot by Trevor Story to make it 4-3. to three. Top of the fifth, RBI double by Dansby Swanson. 5-3 Atlanta. Also in the top of the fifth, two-run double by Brandon McCarthy to make it 7-3. to three. And in the top of the sixth, an RBI single by Freddie Freeman. 8-3 was your final. The Braves are off to a nice 5-2 and two start. We'll see how this lasts. Brandon McCarthy, six innings, five hits, three earned runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.97 ERA. Herman Marquez, four and two-third innings, seven hits, seven runs, six walks, and two strikeouts. Leaves the game with an ugly 6.52 ERA. The Orioles feed the Yankees 7-3 in a 14-inning affair. Baltimore is now 3-5. and five. The Yankees dropped the 4-4. Four and four. Pedro Arujo with the win. Jonathan Holder with the loss. Top of the first inning, Manny Machado solo shot went off in O's. Bottom of the first, RBI single, Giancarlo Stanton to get the Yankees on the board to tie it up at one apiece. Top of the third, another home run by Manny Machado. 2 nothing Orioles. Bottom of the third, RBI single, Aaron Judge. 2 nothing or 2-2. Two, two. Top of the fourth, Chris Davis home run. 3-2 to two, uh, Orioles. Bottom of the eighth, a big home run by... Didi Gregorius is third of the year to make it a 3-3 game. And in the top of the 14th, the game-winning Grand Slam to put the Orioles up for good by Pedro Alvarez off of Jonathan Holder. 7-3. That was your final. Kevin Gossman was okay today. Five innings, five hits, two earned runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Leaves the game with an 8 ERA. And CC Sabathia, who was placed on the disabled list, Due to right hip, a hip, right hip strain. Four innings, four hits, three earned runs, no walks, and three strikeouts. Leaves the game the four ERA. CC will probably just miss his next start, maybe even two starts. We'll see what New York does with the rotation. Do they call up Chance Adams or Justice Sheffield to make a start? Does Chad Green get a start? Does Luis Sessa get a start? It's remained to be seen. I'm fascinated to see what New York does there. The Pirates defeat the Reds 14-3 as they improve to an impressive 6-1. Cincinnati drops to 1-5. Trevor Williams with the win. Luis Castillo with the loss. Bottom of the second, Colin Moran, RBI double, one off the Pirates. Bottom of the second, Jordy Mercer, RBI double, 2 nothing Pirates. Top of the third, 
Infield single by Jesse Winker to get the Reds on the board. Also in the top of the third, RBI single, Joey Votto to tie it up at two apiece. Bottom of the third, RBI single, Colin Moran that scored in two to make it 4-2 Pirates. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single, Josh Harrison, 5-2 Pittsburgh. Also in the bottom of the sixth, a three-run triple by Starling Marte to make it 8-2 Pirates. Bottom of the sixth, two-run double, Corey Dickerson, make it 10-2 Pirates. Bottom of the seventh, RBI single, Josh Harrison to make it 11-2 Pirates. Bottom of the seventh as well. Two-run double, Gregory Polanco, 13-2 Pirates. Bottom of the seventh as well. Sterling Marte safe on a throwing error by Adam Duvall that scored in Gregory Polanco to make it 14-2 Pirates. And a garbage run for the Reds in the top of the ninth. An RBI single by Philip Bourbon. And that was your ball game. Very impressed with the 14 runs put up by the Pirates. 6-1 start for the Buccos. Lewis Castillo of the Reds, 5 innings, 6 hits, 4 runs, 3 walks, 3 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 9 ERA. Trevor Williams, 5 and a third, 10 hits, 2 earned runs, 1 walk, 4 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 1.59 ERA. The Blue Jays feed the Rangers 8-5 to five at Globe Life Park to improve the 5-3. and three. Pit, or Texas drops to 3-6. and six. Marco Estrada with the win. Matt Moore with the loss. Roberto Osuna with the save. Top of the third. Two-run single by Russell Martin to make it 2-0 Blue Jays. Top of the third. Sacrifice fly. Kendris Morales. 3-0 Blue Jays. Top of the fourth. RBI single. Josh Donaldson. 4-0 Toronto. Also in the top of the fourth, sacrifice fly, John, Justin Spoke, 5 out in Blue Jays. Also in the top of the fourth, RBI single, Russell Martin, 6 out in Blue Jays. Top of the sixth, Ian Hervis Solarte, home run, 7 out in Blue Jays. Another home run in the sixth inning for the Blue Jays. This one by Russell Martin, making 8 out in Blue Jays. Here comes the Rangers, who make this one interesting. Bottom of the sixth, home run since it should, it's like his fourth of the year, I believe, to make it 8 to 1. Bottom of the seventh, Drew Robinson reaches on an infield single to shortstop. Rugden Odor scores to make it 8-2. Bottom of the seventh, RBI double, Sinsu Chu, 8-3. Bottom of the seventh, RBI single, Elvis Andrews, 8-4. Also in the bottom of the seventh, RBI double by Adrian Beltre. That was your final. Marco Estrada, six innings, five hits, one earned run, one walk, seven strikeouts, leaves the game with a 2.77 ERA. Matt Moore, three and a third, five hits, five earned runs, four walks, and a strikeout, leaves the game with an 11.05 ERA. Oof, that's ugly. A really good win for the Brewers, 5-4 over the Chicago Cubs. It was a walk-off win as they improved the 5-3. Chicago drops a 3-4. Matt Albers with the win, Mike Montgomery with the loss. Top of the first, the Cubs got it going. On an RBI single by Addison Russell to get on the board, 1-0. Also in the top of the first, Victor Caratini, RBI single, 2-0 Cubs. Bottom of the fifth, two-run home run by Eric Thames to make it a tie game at two apiece. Bottom of the fifth, Travis Shaw, two-run home run, 4-2 Brewers. Top of the sixth, two-run triple by Javier Baez. And Baez actually scored on the throwing error by Eric Sogard. That's what made it a 4-4 game. And in the bottom of the ninth, the walk-off RBI single for Orlando Garcia to give Milwaukee the 5-4 win. Kyle Hendricks, 5 innings, 9 hits, 4 runs, a walk, and a strikeout. Leaves the game with a 4.09 ERA. Brandon Woodruff of Milwaukee, 3 and 2 thirds, 4 hits, 2 earned runs, 2 walks, 3 strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 5.14 ERA. The Padres defeated the Astros 4-1 to to improve the 2-6. and six. The Astros dropped the 6-2. and two. Unbelievable that San Diego, after having a terrible homestand, goes into Houston and picks up a win. Luis Padermo with the win. Lance McCullers Jr. with the loss. Brad Hand rebounds and gets the save. Top of the first. Pass ball by Brian McCann scores in. Jose Perala to get the Padres on the board. Bottom of the third. Sacrifice by Carlos Correa to make it a 1-1 game. Top of the fifth, two-run double by Jose Perella to make it a 3-1 game. 
And in the top of the ninth RBI double by Christian Villanueva to give the Padres a 4-1 win. A nice win for a San Diego team that's not go to, going anywhere this year. Luis Perdermo, five innings, four hits, one earned run, three walks, four strikeouts, leaves the game with a six ERA. Lance McCullers Jr., five innings, seven hits, two earned runs, three walks, seven strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.48 ERA. The Angels defeated the Athletics 13-9 to improve the 6-2. Oakland drops the 3-6. and six. Jim Johnson with the win. Blake, Blake Treenan with the loss. Top of the first inning. Oakland got it going. Chad Lowry home run 1-0 in Oakland. Top of the second. Pass ball. Martin Malinado scores in Matt Chapman to make it 2-0. Top of the second as well. Sacrifice 5. Steven Piscotti to make it 3-0. Top of the sixth. Two-run home run. Matt Joyce to make it 5 0 in athletics. Top of the second, Marcus Simeon home run, 6 0 in athletics. Bottom of the second, here come the Angels. Home run, Shohei Otani. Home run his third straight game. That's impressive for Otani to get the Angels on the board. Bottom of the fourth, ground rule double, and Drelton Simmons, 6 2. Bottom of the fourth, Luis Valbuena reached on an infield single as. Cole Calhoun and, and Droughton Simmons scored. And Luis Valbuena advanced to second on the throw as the Angels take advantage of Athletics' miscues. Bottom of the fourth RBI single, Martin Malnado to make it a 6-5 game. Top of the fifth, Oakland goes up three on a home run by Matt Chapman, a two-run shot to make it 8-5 Oakland. Bottom of the fifth, RBI single by Andrelton Simmons to make it 8-6. Bottom of the fifth, Shohei Otani walks with the bases loaded to make it 8-7. Top of the seventh, Matt Olson home run to make it 9-7. Bottom of the seventh, Zach Cozart safe at second on the throwing error by Matt Chapman. The scores in two runs to make it a 9-9 game. Bottom of the seventh, a three-run home run by Justin Upton to give the Angels a 12-9 lead. And in the bottom of the eighth, Cole Calhoun scored on the wild pitch to give the Angels a nineteen, a thirteen to nine win. And that was a good one for the Angels. Daniel Gassett, three and a third innings, five hits, five hundred runs, a walk, and three strikeouts leaves the game with an eleven point oh five ERA. Parker Bridwell. One and two-thirds innings, seven hits, six earned runs. Leaves the game with a 32.4 ERA. Yuck. That's not a good ERA. And the Dodgers and Giants was rained out. Makeup date is April 28th. Today's games, you have the Orioles at the Yankees from the Bronx. The Yankees looking to rebound from that disappointing loss from last night. They have a ton of injuries now. Brandon Drury's on the disabled list with migraines. He should be back soon. They had to pull Drury yesterday, so you knew something was wrong because I didn't think that Aaron Boone would do that unless if there was an injury, and sure enough, there was an injury. You have Sonny Gray on the bump for the Yankees, winless with a 2.25 ERA with eight strikeouts with a whip of 2.5. Chris Tillman, 0-1 with a 9 ERA with no strikeouts with a whip of 2.75. You have the Rays at the Red Sox from Fenway Park as the Red Sox look to make it seven straight wins. Rick Porcello's on the bump with a 1-0 and a 1.69 eater right at four strikeouts with a whip of 1.31. Jacob Faria, winless with a 2.25 eater right with two strikeouts with a whip of 1.75. You have the Mets at the Nationals. The Nationals looking the rebound from the disappointing home opening loss with Gio Gonzalez on the bump, 1-0 with a 1.5 eater right with seven strikeouts with a whip of 1. Steven Matz is going for the Mets 0-1 with a 6.75 ERA, four strikeouts with a whip of 1.75 as they try to go for their sixth win in seven games. Here are the Tigers at the White Sox as the White Sox try to rebound for the first home win of the year. Michael Fulmer is going for the trade 0-1 with a 1.13 ERA, three strikeouts with a whip of 0.75. Lucas Giolito's going for Washington, winless with a 4.5 year away with one strikeout with a whip of 1.33. You have the Mariners at the Twins today. 
Mike Leak with the 1 and 0 record in the 2.57 ERA of four strikeouts with a whip of 1.14 against Jose Barrios with a 1 and 0 record with a 0 ERA with six strikeouts with a whip of 0.44. Barrios was outstanding in his first start of the season on Sunday against the Orioles. Does he keep it up here? Probably, but we'll see. You have the Diamondbacks up the Cardinals as the Cardinals look to rebound from their home opener. Zach Greinke against Michael Waka. Greinke winless with the 1.59 ERA with nine strikeouts with a whip of .88. Waka's 0-1 with the 7.71 ERA, two strikeouts with a whip of 1.5. You have the Cubs at the Brewers. It's an FS1 game as the Cubs look to even, or not even up, but even up their record and to get a 2-1 advantage in the series. You Darvish against Zach Davies. Darvish is winless with a 10.38 ERA, four strikeouts with a whip of 1.62. Davies is 0-1 with an ERA of 9.53, six strikeouts with a whip of 1.41. I'm going to take the Cubs here to rebound, and you Darvish on the hill. So give me the Cubs. I'd expect Darvish to pitch well after having a rocky opener. You have the Royals at the Indians. As the Royals look, to get a win on the board against the Cleveland Indians. Ian Kennedy against Trevor Bauer. Kennedy winless with a 1.5 ERA, five strikeouts with a whip of one. Trevor Bauer winless with a 3.6 ERA with seven strikeouts with a whip of 1.6. You have the Marlins at the Phillies. As the Phillies look to get their second in a row, Dylan Peters against Vince Velasquez. Peters outstanding in his first start against the Cubs. He obviously won to know with a zero ERA, two strikeouts with a whip of 1.17. Velasquez trying to rebound from that ugly start against the Braves. He's 0-1 with a 13.5 ERA and four strikeouts with a whip of 4.13. You have the Dodgers at the Giants today. As the Dodgers look to get right, Rich Hill against Chris Stratton. Hill won to know with a zero ERA with five strikeouts with a whip of 1.33. Stratton 0-1 with a 5.06 ERA with four strikeouts and a whip of .94. You have the Reds at the Pirates as the Reds look the rebound from the dismal loss yesterday. You have Sal Romano against Chad Cool. Romano 0-1 with a 4.5 ERA, two strikeouts with a whip of 1.33. Cool 1-0 with an ERA of 6.35 with four strikeouts and a whip of 1.41. As the Pirates look to go to 7-1. You have the Padres at the Astros as the Astros looked to bounce back from their disappointing loss yesterday. You have Brian Mitchell against Garrett Cole. Mitchell 0-1 with a 9 ERA with no strikeouts and a whip of 2.2. Cole 1-0 with a 1.29 ERA with 11 strikeouts with a whip of .71. You have the Blue Jays at the Rangers as the Rangers looked to even up this series at a game apiece. Marcus Stroman against Mike Miner. Stroman winless with a 7.2 ERA with eight strikeouts with a whip of 1.2. Minor 0-1 with an ERA of 3.86, five strikeouts with a whip of 1.07. You have the Braves at the Rockies as the Rockies look to bounce back from their home opener loss. Sean Newcomb against Chad Bettis. Newcomb's 0-1 with a 10.38 ERA with six strikeouts with a whip of 2.08. Bettis 1-0 with a 3.6 ERA, four strikeouts with a whip of 1.8. And you have, last but not least, the Athletics of the Angels. You have Andrew Triggs going for Oakland and J.C. Ramirez going for the Angels. I expect this game to be similar to last night with a ton of runs scored. Triggs winless with a 1.8 ERA with seven strikeouts and a whip of 1.2. Ramirez 0-1 with a 7.7 ERA. 7.71 ERA, three strikeouts and a whip of 1.5. That's your baseball slate for today. I mentioned the two Yankee injuries. NHL, you have two more days of the regular season left. You have a ton of games today and then one important game tomorrow. And then one game will be important tomorrow for the Panthers if the Flyers don't win against the Rangers here today. But we'll get to today's games in a little bit as we go over last night's action. The Penguins feed the Senators 4 nothing as... They try to lock up that two spot in the Metropolitan Division. Cindy Crosby on the power play in the second period, in the very beginning of the period, his 29th of the year, 1-0 Pittsburgh. 2 nothing Pittsburgh on a goal by Jake Gunsel, his 22nd of the year, to make a 2 nothing. Third period, Phil Kessel's 31st of the year makes it 3 nothing, And Patrick Hornquist's 29th of the year makes it 4 nothing. 
That was your game. Then you had the, the Lightning defeated the Sabres 7-5. Anthony Sorelli, first period, fourth of the year, went on to Tampa. Buffalo ties it up on a power play goal by Casey Middlestat. His first NHL goal to tie it up at a game apiece. A goal apiece. Nikita Kucherov's 39th of the year makes it 2-1 Tampa. Alexander Nylander's first of the year makes it 2-2. And Yanni Godre's 25th of the year makes it 3-2 Tampa. Second period, Dan Girardi, 6th of the year makes it 4-2 Tampa. Jason Pomaville's 15th of the year makes it 3-4. Jordan, Nol- Jordan Nolan's 4th of the year ties it up at 4 apiece for the Sabres. The Sabres take a 5-4 lead on a power play goal by Kyle Poso. And here comes Tampa. Anthony Sorelli's 5th of the year ties it up at 5 apiece. Braden points 32nd of the year makes it a 6-5 Tampa lead. And Victor Hedman, 17th of the year, makes it a 7-5 game. And that was your game. Blues defeated the Blackhawks 4-1 to keep their season alive. Patrick Merlin's 15th of the year makes it 1-0 Blues. And no more scoring until the third period. Eric Gustafson's 5th of the year gives Chicago on the board and it tied up at a goal apiece. 20 seconds later, Patrick Berglund, Berglund's 16th of the year, makes a 2-1 Blues. Jaden Schwartz, 23rd of the year, 3-1 Blues. And the empty net goal, the hat trick for Patrick Berglund, his 17th of the year, makes the Blues a 4-1 winner to keep their season alive. The Ducks defeat the Stars 5-3. I had the Ducks on the podcast. I had to pick an NBC SN game, and it's a big win for the Ducks. Jacob Silverberg, 17th of the year, makes it 1-0 Ducks. Two nothing ducks on a power play goal by Ricard Raquel. Mark Mathot's first of the year gets Dallas on the board, makes it 2 1. Derek Grant's 12th of the year makes it 3 1 Anaheim. Second period, Josh Manson's seventh of the year, 4 1 Anaheim. Dallas gets it in two on a goal by Riddick Fosca, near 17th of the year, to make it 4 2. Jamie Benn gets the stars within one on his 33rd of the year to make it 4 3. And Andrew Cogliano's 12th of the year puts this game away to make it a 5-3 Ducks final. Today's game, I mentioned Rangers-Flyers. The Flyers have to win this game. They clinch the final playoff spot for good. If the Rangers win, this will make it interesting for Florida as Florida would have to win out because Florida's game is at 7 o'clock tonight and then they play tomorrow as well. I'm going to take the Flyers here to clinch the final playoff spot at home. Henrik Lundqvist has had a terrible year for the Rangers. And Philly's going to be desperate as the Rangers. I'm going to say that they'll hang around in this game like they have for the most part after their trade deadline sell-off. But I expect this to be a 5-4 Flyers win. And for the Flyers to clinch the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. You have the Senators at the Bruins. The Bruins still fighting for the Atlantic Division. They're two points back of Tampa. They need to win their last two games. And Tampa has to lose to Carolina tonight if Boston were to win this division. And the Senators have been tanking for months now. So I expect Boston to make this interesting. For at least now. You have the Canadians at the Maple Leafs. You have the Islanders at the Red Wings. The Sabres at the Panthers. Panthers got to win this game if the Flyers were to lose to the Rangers today. You have the Devils at the Capitals. You have the Lightning at the Hurricanes. You have the Blackhawks at the Jets. The Blue Jackets at the Predators. Nashville has everything clinched. And Columbus is trying to avoid the Pittsburgh matchup in round one. You have a play-in game in the Western Conference between the Blues and the Avalanche. I am very surprised that this game is not on NBCSN. As Nathan McKinnon's had an outstanding season for the Avs. As he's going to be a candidate for that Hart Trophy. Vlad Tarasenko's had another outstanding season. Tarasenko has to be mentioned among the top 10 players in the National Hockey League. Heck, even top 5. He's been an elite player for a couple years now. As the winner of this game makes the playoffs, I'm going to take the Blues on the road. They're the more experienced team. 
This isn't going to count towards Maddie's picks because it's not on national TV. If this game somehow ends up on NBCSN tonight, at least I have my pick in. And I'll count it towards Maddie's picks if this ends up on NBCSN tonight or even the big NBC, which I highly doubt. NBCSN is certainly not out of the equation. Give me the Blues here on the road. Mike Yo's done a great job this year. Meanwhile, the Avalanche has had a great year. They're just not a big game team like the Blues are in terms of from a regular season standpoint. The only, the only a few guys on this Avs team have had playoff experience. And obviously, McKinnon has. Um, Tyson Berry, I believe, has. But other than that, I really don't remember. But on the flip side, the Blues have a lot of experience in these type of games. So give me the Blues to clinch the final playoff spot in the Western Conference. So I made an asterisk by the Blues name in case this ends up on NBCSM. You have the Ducks with the Coyotes as the Ducks try to clinch that three spot in the Pacific Division. You have the Golden Knights at the Flames. That's a meaningless game. You have the Canucks at the Oilers. That's a meaningless game. But it's the Sanin Brothers' final NHL game. That's the only thing worth noting about that game. Stars Kings. The Kings trying to uh, avoid the wild card. And then you have the Wild at the Sharks. As both of these teams are playoff bound. You have Tampa and Boston. 112 and 110 each. If Boston wins out, they win the division. And if Tampa wins tonight, then they win the division. If Boston loses one of these two and Tampa loses out or loses tonight, I believe Tampa wins the division. Toronto's locked in the three. In the Metro, Washington has it clinched. Pittsburgh's up by three points on Columbus for that final home court or home field home ice advantage spot. I think Pittsburgh's locked in the two. Columbus and New Jersey each tied at ninety seven. Philadelphia if Philadelphia beats the Rangers today and Columbus and New Jersey lose, then Philadelphia gets the three spot and will play Pittsburgh in round one. And Columbus and New Jersey be your wild cards as Jersey would play I think Jersey would play Washington and Columbus will play Tampa. Oh, no, my bad. New Jersey would play Tampa and Columbus will play Washington. And then in the Central, I went over the Atlantic scenario where it's crazy. Actually, no, I didn't. Um, If Philadelphia were to lose today and if Carolina, or I'm sorry, Florida, were to win their next two games and say they finish with the same goal differential and finish with the same regulation overtime wins, that means they would have to play a tiebreaker game on Tuesday to determine the final playoff spot. I doubt that happens. I think Philadelphia gets the job done today against the Rangers. Central Division, Nashville has that locked up, the President's Trophy. Winnipeg, Minnesota is a sure thing in round one. Vegas has the Pacific Division locked up. Those three spots, two through four in the Pacific, are... Not locked up yet. It's either going to be San Jose, Anaheim, San Jose Kings, or Anaheim Kings in round one. The scenario of San Jose dropping to the wild cards if they lose tonight to the wild and Anaheim and the Kings win today. As San Jose, I think, would be dropped to four. And then I mentioned the St. Louis, Colorado playing game today. It's just funny on the schedule that those two teams happen to face off today. The winner of that game goes to the playoffs and the loser goes home. If Colorado loses in overtime, then they St. Louis would go, but if Colorado were to win in overtime and St. Louis get the point, then Colorado goes in. St. Louis is ahead by a point in the standings as we speak. NBA real quick, a couple interesting results to get to you from last night. And a couple big games today as well. The Pistons feed the Mavs 113-106 in overtime. Meaningless game as the Mavs tank. Reggie Jackson had 24 in the win. Jonathan Motley, the former Baylor star, had 26 in the feet. 
Let's see the Mavs continue to give him some run because maybe he could be a real player for them. The Hornets feed the Magic 137-100 as the Magic Tank. As Malik Monk put up 26 in the win. That's a good performance by Malik Monk. DJ Augustine put up 19 in defeat. If I'm Charlotte, I'd give Monk some run right now. In what was the biggest game of the night, the 76ers feed the Cavaliers 132-130 to to leapfrog Cleveland in the standings. They are 49-30. and Cleveland's 49-31. and LeBron James in defeat, though, 44 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. J.J. Redick had 28 in the win. Ben Simmons had a triple-double. And that was the Sixers' biggest win in about six years, beating the Cavaliers at home. They'll possibly get that three seed. If you're the Sixers, would you want the three seed and play the injury-rattled Celtics in round one, round two? And you have, in round one, either the Miami, Milwaukee, Washington. That's probably who you get in round one or even round two, assuming Boston loses in round one, depending on who Boston gets. The East matchups are not set in stone yet. But what is set in stone is that the Toronto Raptors clinched the number one seed in the Eastern Conference with a 92-73 win over the Indiana Pacers to prove the 57-22. The Pacers dropped to 47-33. and Serge Ibaka had 25 in the win. Glenn Robinson had 12 in defeat. The Celtics feed the Bulls 111-104. A good win for the injury rattled Celtics as they improved the 54-25. and the Bulls dropped the 27 and 52. Brad Stevens has to be your coach of the year. Kyrie gone for the most of the second half of the year, and he's out for the rest of the playoffs. That is a big blow for the Celtics, by the way, because I did not mention that on my podcast yesterday because the news broke on Thursday, and I just forgot to bring it up. That's a big loss for Boston. That would give whoever they play in round one some confidence as they lost him and Gordon Hayward for the year. Brad Stevens is your coach of the year to get this Celtics team to the two seed as the Bulls dropped to 27-52. and Jalen Brown put up 32 in the win. Sean Kilpatrick put up 24 in defeat. And the other thing is that Jason Tatum and Al Horford sat in that game. So that gave the Bulls an opportunity to move up in the lottery or drop in the lottery. The Hawks defeated the Wizards 103-97. That's a terrible loss for the Wizards as they dropped to 42-38. Atlanta improved to 23-57. Torrey and Prince put up 23 in the win. Bradley Bill put up 32 in defeat. The Knicks defeated the Heat 122-98. Terrible loss for the Miami Heat as they dropped to 43-37. The Knicks move up to 28-51. Goran Dragic put up 15 in defeat. And Damian Dotson had a career game for the Knicks, put up 30 points and 11 rebounds for them. Damian Dotson might be a keeper for the Knicks long term. We'll see. The other rookie, Luke Cornett, put up 17 in the win for New York as well. The Kings defeated the Grizzlies 94-93 as they improve to 26-54. and Memphis drops to 21-58 and as... Bogdan Bogdanovich got the game winner with a second left to give the Kings the win. Willie Cauley-Stein put up 18 in the win. Marshawn Brooks, who's been good for the Grizzlies since being signed by them, 23 in defeat. The Pelicans defeated the Suns 122-103 as the Pelicans improved to 45 and 34. The Suns dropped to 20 and 60. Anthony Davis put up 33 in the win. Marquise Chris put up 23 in defeat, the Timberwolves defeated the Lakers 113-96. Big win for the Timberwolves as they improved to 45-35. and Lakers dropped to 34-45. and Jimmy Butler's back. He scored 18 in the win. Jeff Teague, had eight, or 28, or Jeff Teague had 25 in the win. Josh Hart had 20 in defeat. Tonight's late. You have a monster game tonight that I'll get to in a couple minutes. We have the Nuggets at the Clippers tonight on NBA TV. As these two teams are still battling for the playoffs, the Nuggets stand a half game back of Minnesota for the final playoff spot in the East or in the West. So that is a monster game. 
and the Clippers are trying to keep their season alive as well. You have the Bucks at the Knicks. As Milwaukee needs a big win to move up to try to get the sixth spot. Or here's an interesting thing: Are the Wizards, Heat, and Bucks tanking because they know that the Celtics lost Kyrie Irving? That is a very distinct possibility, and I just thought of that. So keep an eye on that as guys from those three teams are going to be starting to sit players to try to play the Celtics in round one. That is very wise. I didn't even think about that until right now. So keep an eye on that as these tanking teams like the Knicks and the Bulls and the Lakers, I'm sorry, not the Lakers, the uh, Kings and the Suns or the Grizzlies and the Hawks pick up some random wins to finish off the season as those teams face off against that Bucks heat wizards trio, and we'll see who benefits the most and ends up in that seventh spot. And then you have the Nets at the Bulls. You have the Thunder at the Rockets. It is a big game for Oklahoma City as they try to move up in the standings. The Rockets have everything clinched, but I think the Rockets take this game I think James Harden realizes that LeBron's up his butt for MVP and he wants to put up a good performance against his former team and Russell Westbrook. So give me the Rockets in a close one on Saturday primetime. He had the Pelicans at the Warriors. What I think ABC should have done is made a doubleheader out of this and moved the Rocket game to 6 and put the Pelicans-Warriors at 8.30 to put up a nice little doubleheader. That is a big game. The Pelicans need this win. Golden State's locked in the two, so they don't need this game. The Pelicans need to move up in these standings. They have not clinched yet. The only three teams that have clinched in the Western Conference so far has been Houston, Golden State, and Portland. As the other spots have not been clinched yet. And you have the Trailblazers at the Spurs tonight as well. That is a monster game. San Antonio absolutely has to have that game at home as they try to get that four spot. And you have some...